Welcome, this is El Moro Preaching Show. I'm your host, El Moro. I strategically put the camera this way, that way you can see my loft behind. And you can see the bears and all that, okay? Anyway, guys, hey, I want to talk to you about tossing young birds, okay? Like tossing for first time young birds. And this is an experience that I have, okay? I'm not talking about uh, this is the way you should do it. Okay, because we're talking about uh, Cuba 1972, all right? So over there in Cuba, it's, it's different than here in 1972, a little different than 2024. Uh, magnetic fields, solar flares, I mean, uh, mountains, Cuba, there's a lot of mountains everywhere. Uh, so it's, it's different, but I want to tell you an experience that I have. Okay, I started preaching with Spanish powder, and I used to live in the roof, uh, fourth floor, in a penthouse. Penthouse is not like luxury over there. Okay, I had a little house, uh, the size probably of my living room today. All right, yeah, maybe about that. So, um. I started with Spanish powders. They gave me two home impeachments. I will never forget them, okay? I was a blue checker and a brown, like it was white with brown little splashes. We call them moteados in Spanish, okay? So it was an empedrado and a moteado. The empedrado or the empedrada, because it was a hand, the hand was a blue checker I named her pretty eyes all fail and the other one the moteada moteado I call them uh, the arrow la flecha you know and I didn't know nothing about homing pigeons nothing about homing pigeons so I I noticed that they used to fly together they didn't fly with my partner they used to fly together and they used to fly really really high you know, and and they stay out there for a long time. I, and I, I like that. I like that. You know, back when I was a kid, you know. So then I started going to this library in Cuba. You know, that was needless to say, there was no Google, no cell phones, nothing like that. So we had to read books. So I started going to his library. It, it was, it, it, it is called. Jose Marti, library Jose Marti, and it's huge, huge library. I mean, it had like floors and books everywhere. So I found books from uh, old, it was old, home and pigeon books. So I wanted to read about home and pigeon. And they were from like Russia. All these pigeons that they let go from Russia, in Russia with all the mountains, and they had to cross the mountains and the cold weather and the predators. And it was like, oh my gosh, and they had these pictures and I love these pictures, man, of these birds. And I'm like, wow, I wanna have these birds. Even though I really like Spanish potters, you know, there was an attraction to the homing pigeon. So I learned and somebody told me and I read it, hey, pigeons, Homing pigeons, they can come back from far away. I said, really? So I got my two youngsters and I took them 77 kilometers away, which is some about 34 miles. Now, I didn't know any better. So I just took them, I said, hey, you know, they're gonna come back. I knew they were gonna come back. So I took them with my friend uh, my friend, her name was Mercedes. I never forget this, and I let them go like eight o'clock in the morning. You know, let them go. They went two times around, made a circle, and then they went straight in the direction of my house. Now they had to cross all these mountains. There was a, a mountain, uh, uh, the two two big mountains. It was called Las Tetas de Managua. 
which means the Tiris of Manawas, because there was two mountains like this, and uh, it looked like a couple of breasts, you know, women breasts. So they call them Manawas Tiris. So these birds, I saw them head toward Manawas Tiris, those two mountains, and they disappear. So when I talked to my mom, she told me the birds got there at 10 o'clock. So it took them two hours to get there from 34 miles, okay? Good, all right, that's the end of that story. So that, to tell you the truth, that was the only toss I think that I didn't keep up with homing pigeons that far, you know? Because I was into Spanish powders. I used to toss my Spanish powders like homing pigeons, you know? And they used to come back. Uh, one time they didn't. One time one didn't, you know? And I miss them still until this day, dearly. So, okay, I come to the United States. I start doing pigeons. And I start reading because I, I, I didn't do pigeons for a long time. So I said, man, I got to read again. For, for, for a whole month, I started researching and reading again about pigeons because it's been a long time since... I, I wasn't in, in the pigeon game, you know, so I had to get it back. So over here, I'm watching videos and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, all these videos are wrong, man. Wait a minute, I didn't do it like this, I did it like this. You know, so I learned some things from the pensions over here that I adopted. Some things I would never adopt. I'm like, nah. This is the way I do it as I'm little and I know it works. So, about tossing, I started really know you gotta let the birds, the baby birds first go from one mile, half a mile, then one mile, then two miles, then different directions, then this and that. I'm like, oh wow, nah, in Cuba, the first one that I let out, I let out from 77 kilometers, 34 miles. They came back home two hours, no problem, over the mountains and everything. But as I study, guys, it's, it's sometimes you can do that here, and, and the birds will do it. You can get youngsters that love fly, that never ever, because this is what happened to these two babies that I had. They never flew any, uh, only in my love. They flew a lot, a lot, a lot. And I just took them 34 miles, 35 miles, boom, let them go. They came back. But over here, you know, you can do that too. But a lot of people don't want to risk it. You know, they don't want to risk it. And some birds don't make it. Plain and simple. Uh, some birds don't, don't make it from first time toss from 30 something miles. You know, uh, a lot of birds do make it. But we're scared, you know? So we baby them. We baby them because we love our pigeons. It doesn't mean they're bad, guys. It doesn't mean they're bad. I mean, if you have a bird that you let go first off from 40 miles, come back. Hey, it's a good bird. You got a bird you let go, they get lost. You know, you, you let go of the flock and, you, and it takes two, three days for the birds to come back. And it comes back by himself. That's a good bird, guys. You know, that's a keeper for real. You got to keep him. So over here, I learned to let the birds baby the birds. And that's what I do right now. That's what I do right now. But there is those times that I say, forget it. You know, and I just take them far and I let them go. Because there are those times that I go back to when I was a child that I did that without knowing and the bird came back anyway, you know? So there are those times that I take them far and I just let them go, you know? But to tell you the truth, at those times are very few because I don't race. A lot of people that race today, they have 200 exercises and 200 birds. And their mentality is, I let them go. If they don't come back, and then it was no good. No good for racing anyway. That's not true. Okay, that's not true at all. You never know what the birds go uh, through. Like back then in Cuba, in my time, there was no hawks. I flew the birds 
whole year round. Never, ever, ever had a problem with hawks. United States, man, you have, oh my gosh, you have all types of hawks. In Florida alone, there's like 10 or 12 different types of hawks. Okay, they got a lot of predators over here. So you never know what those birds uh, go through, man, when you let them go. Don't say, oh, that's no good. Let them go from, let them go from 12 miles. Uh, they don't come back. They come back five days later. Man, a bird that comes back for the first time that you toss it from 12 miles, five days later, let me tell you something, that bird is a survivor, okay? That bird already learned to come back by himself. Who knows, if you let him go from the south, that bird may maybe flew all the way past the loft. Maybe it went all the way southeast and it went all the way up north, past the loft, went north for another 30 miles, Whoa! realized, oh, wait a minute, I run the wrong way. And it went all the way to the west, okay? All the way, all the way to the west. And then I said, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Woo, went back to the south, past your house again, okay? Went on the tree, <sighs> I got a rest, okay? Okay, let me go back, boom, and go back. And after five days later without water, well, drinking water in lakes, drinking water in ponds, okay? When already maybe went to a loft, it the food from the loft, but never went in, but went back, and then found your house five days later and come back to your house. Now, you're saying, nah, this bear's not good. I'm gonna sell it to so-and-so. It didn't came back right away like the other birds. But the other birds didn't get the school that this little bird got. See what I mean? <laughs> it didn't get that school. Now, next time you toss that bird, he already been south, west, east, north, everywhere. And then that bird already has more uh, uh, smarts than the other birds that came straight back. So you never know, guys. I had, I have, I have a white homing pigeon. Man, it's, it's, it's 18 miles, 17, 18 miles per hour wind today. So the birds are going, Phew. anyway. So, <clears throat> oh, I don't have any birds flying right now. It's just a regular bird. So I have a bird, a white homing pigeon bird. Uh, the band is 170. Okay, let them go for the first time. All the babies flew. That bird, I remember he went straight that way. That's west. And it, it disappeared. I didn't know if he came back or not. You know, in my mind, I thought, oh, he got lost. But maybe, because I didn't know the band. I didn't know that if he came back with the babies and went in. So I have no idea that he left or came back. I have no idea. All of a sudden, my friend called me from 40 miles away. Hey, man, they gave me a bird that came. They had a 340-mile uh, race, and the bird, your baby bird, youngster, came in, and it went in the loft. So the guy knows I have whites, so he gave it to me. I see your band. I know you, so I'm calling you. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, what? My bird, 40 miles away? Oh, yeah, it's your bird. So I go over there and I look, oh man, what did this baby do? So this bird got himself with the flock that was coming already from 340 miles. Now when the birds are close to home from a race, they go faster. So this bird got with that flock and it kept up and it made it there. Okay, so I gave it back to me. I'm like, wow, that's good. Let him go again. I guess it was next day, two days after, I don't remember. I got a call. I got another call for poor Charlie. Hey man, I got your bird here, got your band. Oh, okay, I'm, I didn't know it was the same. Youngster. So I go over there, I get it, I'm going, whoa, 170, again? So I told the guy, the guy said, 
uh, I told him what happened. He goes, oh, yeah, that bird is no good. Bird is no good. Okay, let's see. Took him back. This bird is still here. I told that bird from everywhere. <laughs> that bird is almost the first one here all the time. You know, he's got good. He's got smarts, this bird. To have, because it went through all that. Yeah, I went and picked him up. He didn't come back by himself. But he went through all that ordeal. So now it's, I got no problem. I toss him from everywhere. He back. You know? So I just told you that, that story. I feel like talking today. So I told you that story about my bird. And, and man, when you let the, the moral of the story is you're dealing with so many different factors when you release youngsters, man. You know? These youngsters never flew, you know. But I'm gonna give you an advice. When they're babies, put them outside. See, I got this right here. This, this right here, this dog cage. It's, uh, it's got this uh, all over, so the mesh wire, that way the hogs don't get them. So this is what you do, guys. You put them outside when they're babies for an hour and let them see the older birds flying. They are learning. These birds are so smart, man. Put them there and watch their body language. They looking, right? They look, they look, they look, they looking. They're learning. Okay? When the hog comes, all the birds fly. Watch their reaction. They, you know, they go again. They, they try to fly because they are learning. Okay? Now, when you let them go, more than likely, they're gonna do what they see the birds do, but you leave them there. For I never, I never let the birds, the the youngsters out until the first, the number ten. In, in Cuba, I call it the number one. But over here, they say the number ten guy feather grows all the way out. I I learned that. I learned that in Cuba. Some people, some people don't do that. Some people let them out before that way they have. They, they don't go nowhere. That way, they have no power to leave. Listen, you accomplish that when you put them in the cage. They are already learning. Okay, so now I'm going to let them go when it's full. That way they're strong and they fly. Hey, I know they're going to fly. They're going to be strong. I know some people might say, Oh, you let him go like that, they just, they're just going to uh, fly away and get lost. Man, if they're good birds, they're, not, they're, they're really not going to get lost, okay? If they get lost, it's because something happened. Look, Abraham gave me, or I bought from him, 15 birds. When I didn't have no birds, here, okay, 15 birds, all right? And before I let him go... I didn't have no birds flying here. Okay, all I did was put them in the, I had them in the lanai. I put them in the cage. I saw their body language. When they were like, they, they all wanted to go in the lanai, I carried the box over there, the, the dog cage, I opened it. And then I go like that, you know, that way they don't fly away and they go in. I did that for about a month. They were really strong. One day I said to Abraham, Hey man, I'm gonna let them go. And it was windy like this. Abraham said, no, don't let them go, man. It's too windy. It's too windy. Uh, I think he said, wet their feather. Somebody said to me, put soap in their feathers. Somebody say, uh, no, tape them. I said, man, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do that I'm used to doing. So I opened it. Needless to say, I pay a lot of money for those birds, okay? About 300 and something bucks. I opened it, they all came out. Man, birds everywhere. <laughs> Babies everywhere because they had no school. They, didn't, they never saw birds flying on a flock together. See, when you put them there and they see the flock, they come out, for the most part, they fly with the flock. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they go on a tree. Sometimes they go on the roof. You know, sometimes they go flock over here, they go over there. But when I let these 15 babies go, they're like, choo, choo, whoo, 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 choo, choo. 
everywhere. I'm like, oh my gosh, I was laughing. I'm like, look at this bird. Guess what? They, and it was very windy. It was a day like this, man. You could see the wind, you know? And Abraham said, no, you're gonna lose them all. I let out 15. I got back 14. One bird, the one that I lost, went on the cable right here. The lanai's right here. It was a, like white-headed, uh, uh, white flight. Man, that bird, I, he was looking at that. He was looking. It's right there, dude. All you have to do is come down. You know what that bird did? He just went, flew, flew straight. Never came back. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. That's what happened. So I start those 14 bird okay i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a video about uh some stories of uh sticking birds okay because i st I, I i stick homing pigeons all the time and i i tell you that on the other stories all right so that's that's the story about uh about the the birds guy uh, you know when you're tossing you you tossing uh my my advice is to baby them baby them because I do the same thing now, because it's different times. That was just the story I told you. It's different times, baby them, all right? Because you, you don't, you don't want to lose your birds. It doesn't mean your bird is bad. It doesn't mean it's no good. No, you got to baby them, they're babies, okay? So little by little, you do half a mile. Do half a mile again. It's called confidence, for them to build confidence. Yeah, do half a mile three times. Okay, oh, this is my dog over here, Talk. come here, Sue. This is my baby. Yeah. So uh, confidence, guys. You know, you, they, they got to have confidence. And then take them a mile. Okay? And if you do different directions, you're going to lose them. If you do this, like, uh, right away, you got to get them used to it, little by little. Like, you go to the south, to the south, you're already down five miles to the south. When you go to the north, start again. You know, don't, don't risk it. Start again. Uh, half a mile. You know? But see... A lot of the people that race, they lose a lot of birds because the race is coming. They got no, no patience. Oh, we got it. Hey, we got it. Ah, ah, ah. And then oh, they lose so many birds, you know, uh, because of the pressure, this pressure. I have no pressure. I don't race. I, I go easy. I go easy on them, you know. So, hey, if I left something out, I'm sorry. I don't know everything, you know, but... That's about it. That's all I wanted to share today, guys. So you guys uh, love your pigeon. Take care of your pigeons. And you have a blessed day.